Hello, my name is Michael Charleston. I'm a bioinformatician uh, and computational biologist at University of Tasmania. I'm working with Australian Biocommons to bring you this phylogenetics back to basics uh, tutorial. This is the first video accompanying the written notes that are in the GTN. Um, this tutorial is a back to basics tutorial in the sense that it is not a how-to where you'll cut and paste or copy and paste instructions and just work through from beginning to end and get a phylogeny at the end. This is geared to people who perhaps have built a phylogeny in the past and really want to know the principles uh, that the methods use to, uh, to create those phylogenies, to estimate the phylogenies. It does help to have a little bit of motivation, though, um, in case you're wondering why build phylogenetics, which is unlikely since you're already here learning about how phylogenetic methods work. But this is probably the most famous phylogenetic tree of all time, uh, sketched by Charles Darwin in a notebook um, with the caption, I think, signifying that he's thinking that species have evolved from common ancestors via, via descent with uh, diversification, variation, later appearing in the origin of species. Uh, and that's what we're trying to get at. So there's the whole understanding of life motivation, how things are related to each other, which is important just for its own sake. Um, of course, there are other motivations, such as understanding how this beast has been evolving. Um, this is a coronavirus, um, and we are all familiar probably all familiar with the importance of the evolution of uh, the genes that code for the spike proteins um, and that account for the emergence of new strains, uh, as shown here on our next strain figure taken um, from the latest um, uh, estimations of how the strains of coronavirus uh, SARS-CoV-2 are uh, evolving and emerging um, to uh, the present day. Here you can see there's a beautiful tree here. I say it's beautiful because I like phylogenetics. It's a little bit scary seeing how fast these strains are emerging and they're colored by the different groups of the strains or uh, variants to our beta, alpha, gamma and so on. So that's a motivation as well because understanding how um, viruses are evolving through time, particularly the fast evolving variants is very important to help us manage it. It's important also to um, infer evolutionary trees because they're really central, they're crucial to making conservation decisions. And so if you're a manager or a policymaker and you need to make a decision about which species to attempt to save um, in a group, then it's really important to know which species um, are preserving the most biodiversity. And of course, biodiversity crash is one of the great existential crises of our time. So that's um, a good motivator as well. Phylogenies are also the fundamental statistical framework with which we can compare species. If you don't have a phylogeny and otherwise called an evolutionary tree, then you don't have a way of accommodating their shared history when you're comparing them. And accounting for that shared history, accommodating it, is crucial to be able to do real comparative biology. Without the phylogeny, you simply can't do that. We'll talk about terminology, this being a mathematical statistical process. We need to have good names for terms that we're going to be using throughout. Um, I'm a mathematician, so I talk about these trees as graphs or networks. Um, I talk about edges and nodes, uh, and we'll introduce those terms uh, through the tutorial so that we're all on the same page. We'll begin with different sources of data, such as uh, molecular sequences. So you should know what molecular sequences are. Uh, for example, nuclear uh, nucleotide sequences from genes, 
um, or amino acid sequences. There are other kinds of data as well that will uh, be used for phylogenetic inference, but predominantly modern phylogenetics uses molecular sequences. And these sequences are generally uh, have to be aligned so that you can see um, that the, the which sites, which positions in the sequences have changed, when they've changed, what they've changed to or from, and those sequence those differences can help us infer trees. So we'll talk a little bit about the sequence alignment. We'll also talk about using um, uh, essentially two main classes of building or estimating trees. The first one really is a building process where you start with some distances and build the tree up. We'll go into details about how this works in the tutorial. We'll also talk about how uh, the other main uh, approach to phylogenetics works, where you essentially assign a score function, some kind of goodness measure, and search for the trees that maximize this goodness overall fit of your tree to the data that you see. For example, um, probably the most commonly used criterion would be maximum likelihood. And we find the tree that has the highest probability of giving us the data that we see. Again, this is uh, coming up in the tutorial. We'll also touch on um, perhaps an underused uh, tool in phylogenetic inference, which is a phylogenetic network. Um, this one is um, showing that we've got some branches that look a little bit tree-like, they're long and thin, um, but we'll explain what a phylogenetic network is and how it can help you understand what the phylogenetic information is in your data set and help you identify perhaps which are the difficult areas uh, to infer, and which are the easy ones. So all that's coming up. Um, I hope that gives you a broad view of what the tutorial was all about. And um, I think it's time to begin. Thank you.